Well, the 2021 season of The Witch is upon us, and what better way to enter into it than speaking about witches? There's a lot of information on witches and witchcraft in general, but with that comes a lot of misinformation. So, are witches actually green-faced hags that want to curse your life, or are they dark gothic spell-casting outcasts, or maybe something else altogether? Let's find out. I'm Melvin, and this is Tell Me About It, Witches. How most will imagine a witch will be dependent on their age. Some will think this. Well, just try to stay up in my way. Just try. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. <laughs> Some might go for this. Some will see this. We are home. Oh, sweet revenge. You might have noticed the witches are all female, which might lead some to believe that males can't be witches or that the male equivalent to a witch is called a warlock. Well, I'm here to inform you that a witch, or the term witch, is used for both males and females who practice witchcraft and the magical arts in general. Gender does not matter. In the case of warlock, yes, it can be used to describe male witches, but it means deceiver and breaker of oaths. Not the best label to have. In other words, you can't trust warlocks, and they're proven to be what we now call scammers. Throughout history, witches and people accused of being witches have been hunted, tortured, and killed. In the United States, we had, of course, the Salem Witch Trials, but that pales in comparison to the witch hunts of Scotland in the late 1500s and throughout the 1600s. It's believed that 6,000 people, majority being women, were killed. A good portion of them were strangled to death and then burnt. The rise of the godly state is believed to be the major contributing factor to this. Despite what religion tries to tell you, majority of witches have not made a deal with the devil. Many of them are peaceful, keep to themselves, and work with the natural elements of the world. As for hexes and curses, while those are a real thing, it takes time and more energy than it's often worth for a witch to hex someone. Many would rather just whack the person who did them wrong upside the head with their broomstick and leave it at that. Now, where did the idea of witches using a broomstick to fly come from? This is a common question with a complicated answer, because there is no true way to pinpoint how this became a thing. Anthropologist Robin Skelton has said that witches and brooms have roots in pagan fertility rituals. These rituals would involve farmers leaping and dancing with pitchforks or brooms under a full moon to encourage the growth of their crops. The broomstick dance then became confused with accounts at that time of witches flying through the night on their way to orgies and other not-so-holy meetings. There's also another story that says witches would make potions and ointments and instead of ingesting them through their mouths, they would ingest them through the more intimate parts of their bodies. Rubbing the potions or ointments on the broomstick and holding the broomstick under their arms or have the broomstick between their legs. You see where I'm going with this. Do you have to be psychic or have a form of ESP to be a witch? No, you do not. Being psychic has nothing to do with witchcraft, but there are psychics who are witches. There isn't just one type of witch either. There are as many types of witches as there are cultures, for all cultures have some type of use of magic in them. On Unexplained Possibilities, we've spoken to a Celtic witch, Slavic witch, 
and of course our favorite witch from Texas. What a witch does to make the magic happen in their craft is solely up to them. There are some witches who will work with deities, some only work with candles, some whose focus is on herbs, and there are witches who do a little of everything. It's no set rule stating you have to choose one thing and one thing only. There is no limit in the witchcraft that can be practiced. You can come from a line of witches and not be a witch, just as you can come from a line of non-witches and become a witch. Becoming a witch is possible for anyone if they're willing to put in the work and learn, fail, and succeed. The background of a person doesn't determine if they can become a witch or not. It's the choice of the person that is what matters. So if you choose not to be a witch, then you're not a witch. If you choose to become a witch, well, you have to put in that work and then you become a witch. Witches are often viewed as evil, perform dark magic, being aligned with the devil and overall harmful to people. In truth, witches are everyday people you wouldn't recognize to be a witch. Yes, some might be into the golf culture, but not all. They come across as everyday people. The practicing of dark or light magic is nonsense as well. Intent behind the magic is what matters. Dark magic, light magic, whatever you want to call it, it all comes from the same source. It's the intent of the witchy practitioner that matters. Now, are there signs that a person is a witch? Not really. Again, it's about choice, and on rare occasion, something higher up might pull you towards a certain path. Finally, while it would be nice to say a little incantation and make things happen, that's just not reality. You're not going to see real witches shoot fireballs, poof something into existence on the spot, and they would never say they will do it on the astral realm. When witches perform magic, when they perform witchcraft, it takes time and energy. They aren't breaking reality, they're working within reality. Depending on the type of spell they're going to do, it might take days or weeks to do it. Magic isn't an on-the-spot thing. Witches will take their time to do spells because they want it done right doubly so if they're doing it for another. There you have it. Hopefully I was able to tell you a little something you didn't know about witches. So with that done, you said tell me about witches and now you've been told. If you have a suggestion for a future tell me about it, be sure to let us know in the comment section down below or on social media and those links can be found in the description. Thank you all for watching and be on the lookout for more Tell Me About It.